Have you ever wondered how much cash you can make by fixing and flipping a car in just one day? Well, we are about to find out. So we decided to buy some cheap cars off the internet, fix them up and flip them to see if we can use some basic fixing and modification skills to get them out the door in one day. I found this Renault Clio Sport sitting in the corner of a scrapyard, so I said to the guy, what's that doing here? And he said, I'm about to crush it. And I said, what's wrong with it? And he said, this reenactment is wrong. You weren't even there. Oh, that's true. I, I wasn't there. I said to him, What's wrong with it? And he said, No, Red Joe, it got dropped off for scrap. And I said, Can I buy it? And he said, How about 800 bucks? And I said, Is there anything I need to know? And he said, Watch out for baggies and syringes. So we bought it. As you can imagine, guys, when you buy a car like this that is destined for the bin, there is a whole lot of stuff that's wrong with it, like this, this, that, this, this, gross, that, this, 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 that, that, this, 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 that, this, and that. So we decided to fix it up as quickly as possible while making sure it's safe. And at the end of the day, we're gonna sell it to see how much cash we can make from a quick flip. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. This here is a Renault Clio Sport. Three quick facts. Massive two litre engine for a car this small. Five speed manual. These make good dailies and excellent track cars. Fourth bonus fact, this one is we are hopefully going to sell this car tonight, but Martin, it needs a lot of work. What are you starting on? I'm going to make it look better. I'm going to fix the rear bar, which is cracked, and the roof, which is faded. Uh, I'm going to start on the interior because it smells like apples. It needs a wet back. That'll give it time to dry, hopefully, before it leaves tonight. It needs a full service. We might even need to buy some panels, Martin. So let's get to it. The first step in our quick fix is cleaning out the interior because anyone looking to buy a car does not want to be sitting in a biohazard of stinky human slime. And look how much filth came out of the front seats alone. That is freaking disgusting. Meanwhile, I'm removing the lights so I can get to the bumper. A brush and some interior cleaner gets into all the nooks and crannies and then you can use a cloth to whisk away all the dirt. After cleaning the carpet, you can use some odour eliminator to help with the stench, but baked in grot may need some actual proper power scrubbing. I'm using the Ryobi compact scrubber to clean all the human slime, but there's lots of uses for your car as well. Interior, carpet, even your wheels. It's just a really, really handy thing to have. And plus that part there is waterproof. It's IPX7 rated, which means it can get a little bit wet, which is uh, very handy when you're working on a filthy wet car like this one. After a quick clean up, the interior is looking and smelling much better. So now the bumper can come off and Marty can see what repairs are needed. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna buff out any scuffs with a little bit of cut and polish on a random orbital polisher. This is an excellent way of getting some of those tired panels looking a whole lot better quickly and on the cheap. This one is much more substantial with an actual panel dent, but we're gonna try a kind of strange DIY hack to see if we can fix it. And that is coming up soon. But with these scuff marks gone, the car's already looking better. I just made up a joke. Why is this Renault not electric? Why? Because it's not very current. You actually didn't like that joke? No. You thought it was shit? Yeah. Okay. You're going to buy me another drink? No. Oh. To fix this bumper, the first thing I need to do is cut a few pieces off and place them in water to see if they float. To repair this bumper bar, rather than go to the records and spend big money on a new one, I am going to repair it by plastic welding it. Plastic welding uses little strips of plastic that you melt into the bumper bar and then you can finish it off and make it look pretty. There are different kinds of plastic. You can do a float test where you cut off little bits, put it in water, see what floats, see what sinks. That tells me that this is polyethylene. The other way you can check that is just by looking at the bumper because it says P slash E. So I could have saved myself the time. Anyway, now all we've got to do is melt it, shove this in, make it look pretty and then paint it. Unlike this plastic repair which Marty can weld and do a quick fix on, other things like this tailgate is more substantial and it's not something we can actually fix easily or cheaply. So when it comes to a panel like this, something you can just remove entirely, it's always going to be easier and better just to replace it if you can get the colour right. So I've managed to find one that's 50 bucks. Hopefully when it arrives the black is similar because obviously the cars will weather differently. It's two bolts and some wiring. We throw this one in the bin. Put the other one on and that gets that fixed. The new boot lid has arrived, but it has no plug, so I'm gonna have to solder that once it's been installed. 
I'm laying down both the boot lids side by side on panel stands so I can transfer over the components. Most importantly, we're going from this to this. The bumper is repaired and looking good, so next I'll prep the roof and bonnet and paint everything at the same time. Getting a good finish from a rattle can is not easy, so preparation is key. Step one is to strip off the failed paint. If you have time, then primer and blocking will yield an even better result. But either way, you want it as flat and clean as possible before you start spraying anything. The new boot lid can go back on, making sure that the alignment doesn't cause it to hit the roof which is about to be painted. So the paint on the roof is absolutely gone. No buffer, no polish is going to save it because the clear coat's actually broken up. Happens when you don't wash or wax your car for a long time, leave it outside in the Australian sun. So we're going to knock it back. I'm using this sander. Um, it has an integrated vacuum in it which is awesome so it sucks all the dust away. Basically just going to whiz it off like this. <laughs> And that's gonna look excellent. So we have rubbed back to the roof and the bonnet. And while we don't have a booth to paint in, we're basically gonna cover the car with this, which is basically a drop sheet that a painter would use. And then cut out a hole in it, Martin. Cut out the bits that we wanna paint and we'll mask off the bits that we're not painting. We are gonna be painting it with color matched rattle cans. Yeah. So you don't have the same volume of paint. You don't have to worry about hardened paint and two pack and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it will protect the rest of the car from getting overspray on it. So we'll cut this out and start painting. And if you're on a time budget and a cost budget, uh, it's gonna give an excellent result. I mean, I would say it's gonna be better than painting a Honda Civic on a driveway under a tree on a rainy day. What do you reckon, Martin? We did that. We did. The more time you spend on your prep and your masking, the better the job is going to be, particularly if you're doing a DIY job at home in your garage. You also want the paint to be not too cold when it's coming out of the can, so we put ours in a bucket of warm water first. So this is colour matched single pack paint, so it's air dry, it doesn't need to be activated, it doesn't have as much stuff in it that's really bad for you. Uh, still got idea to wear some kind of mask, a painting mask ideally, or at a minimum, something like this. And we're gonna start in the middle and do nice big even strokes over here. These generally do spray real nice, but when they start to run out, they do get sputtery. So it's always good to keep an eye on that. And do some base coat, let that flash, and then do clear, and it will look good. I love story that might be. We wasn't supposed to happen. So much talk around us. We became numb to the yapping. It was like 05, got my license to drive. Picked you up in my pops car, went for a ride. Couldn't no one tell us nothing. That night was ours. All the stars aligned and you were so damn fine. Yeah, it was young love. Young hearts were so pure. We trust love is so hard to endure. A few years passed, made the move out west. It became harder to maintain it, put us to the test. I hope you know I did my best. Every birthday and Christmas. Scraping up every penny, eating dinner for breakfast. Restless, but you left me so breathless. Every While the paint was drying, we fixed up the cloudy headlights with extra avocado and also cleaned up underneath the bonnet because this is going to be standard viewing for anybody that's looking to buy a sportier car like this. And anyone else who was standing around watching was put to task giving the whole car a full cut and polish to make it look as good as possible for all those extra dollary dues that hopefully we'd be cashing in with in a few hours time. Our bumper bar is repaired, plastic welded, bogged and painted while we had the cans out for the rest of the car. However, we can't buff it just yet because it's still curing. Meanwhile, the tailgate is on and I'm doing a rear wiper delete because not only does that look terrible, the motor that actually ran it is completely broken. We can't get another one today. So that is just going to get a little plug in it to keep it waterproof. But down here, you probably saw before we buffed out a bunch of these paint scrape marks from an accident, but there's still a massive dent there. We're going to attempt to fix it with a basketball. This here's a big dent. This here's a big basketball. We've taken out the interior panel. We're going to drop that down into the cavity. Then using the Ryobi power inflator, we're going to plug it in, pump up the ball, and hopefully that will push out the dent. I heard it go pop. Yeah, it's awesome. The shape of the car is now correct again. Rather than being caved in, it's all the same shape. Now you just sort of tidy that up. That's great. All right, let's get this out, put the rear bar on, then give it a service. If the outside of the car and the inside has been so neglected, then there's a good chance that the drive line has been too. 
We're going to give the car a service, check the fluids, tyres and brakes. We can already see that the brake pads are wafer thin, so we've ordered some new pads which we'll put in also. The underside looks like it's flown over an open oil rig while being blasted with dirt. So to try and work out why it looks so chat, we're going to clean all the crud off with brake cleaner on a rag. Left for long enough, even a tiny oil leak can make it look like a dirty swamp and often the fix is a simple gasket or a seal, but you're never going to know for sure until you clean it up. Next we can dump the oil which looks well and truly ready for a change, then a new oil filter can go onto the front of the engine and then we're ready to fill it up. By the way, the oil filter placement on this car is absolutely horrible. Thanks, Renault. It's possible that whoever buys this car is going to just use it as a daily, but they may end up doing some track days, regardless of which we want to make sure it's got a proper oil in it, which is why we use Castrol Edge in all of our cars. They are a sponsor of our show, and this one here is the Mighty Car Mod Special Edition, which means it's got my face on it. And Ma there's Martin's face. My face. See, his face is on there as well. And while I do this, Martin's going to be changing this engine mount because it is flogged. Is that the technical term, it's Martin? absolutely flogged. Absolutely flogged. So we're going to change that. And then we're almost there, people. The engine in this thing flops around like a soggy pink banana in a Renault glove box. And we've worked out the upper engine mount is flogged. It's a fairly straightforward repair. We just have to support the engine from underneath and then swap it out. Next, we're going to sort out the brakes. The pads are weeks away from squealing more than a Swifty with front row tickets. The rear calipers are a little tricky as the piston needs to be wound back in to accommodate the thicker pads. The front, however, is really straightforward, with the pads going in and out with just a single bolt removed. The car did sit around the scrapyard for a while, so a quick hit with the wire brush will get any surface rust off the discs, meaning the pads are hitting clean metal the first time they're applied. While it's apart, we're going to check the seals and check that the slides are lubricated, and then bleed out all the dirty old fluid and throw in some fresh Castrol React.4. Alright, so the back brakes are a bit tricky to change, the front are not, but look at that. She's wafer thin. They were absolutely ready to change front and back about the same. So within a month or two, you'd have squealing brakes. It's one thing to try and make some money from fixing up older objects, but there's a deeper underlying philosophy here. We're moving closer and closer to a world that just consumes and then throws away anything that no longer works or fits with the owner's lifestyle. Clothes, furniture, electrical goods and cars just like this one are ending up on the scrap heap, but often they can be rescued with just a little bit of time and effort. We're running the risk of becoming a society that forgets how to fix, repair or even think for ourselves. So what is the cure? You gotta get your hands dirty. Buy a car for cheap and then try and fix it and if you're lucky, you might even make a few bucks while you're doing it. Or you can work towards being one of the most valuable and hardworking members of the community, a real mechanic. Okay, people, the car is looking fantastic, but now it's time to go for a drive. That's right, so I'm gonna jump in. We're gonna go for a bit of a cruise, check everything. We've also put some more registration on this thing, so the new owner won't have any costs for at least a couple of months. It also makes it way easier to sell when someone can drive away in it. That's right, if you've gotta to go to somewhere with a tow truck or a trailer, it means that your potential buyers are way smaller, but how do you attract these buyers in the first place, people? You want maximum eyeballs on your car with your marketing campaign, and Martin has made a marketing device. So this goes in a hitch receiver of a tow bar, it mounts some cameras, it means you can get it nice and low and nice and secure, and then through some trickery control it from inside the car. So what we're gonna do is, I've got this little camera here, little Osmo pocket, that there is gonna be controlled from inside a chase car with my iPhone. Basically it's gonna attach like this, Martin. Like that. We're gonna drive along while someone else is driving the car on my phone, I'll get some mad rollers, low down shots, maybe a couple of videos, and that means We'll get maximum attention for our ad. We're actually going to sell it, not using Mighty Car Mod social medias, Martin. Because that means that the, the numbers science. are actually legit. Proper science. Uh, let's go. For a day's work, we reckon this looks pretty amazing. So now we just need some photos and some videos, then an ad can go up tonight. Yeah. I took a trip as a young and I'm running, I'm loving the freedom, I never look back. I've got the vision of singing in every nation, I land, we'll fly in a flag. I see us coming together, relax, and tell all the ops to give me the facts. Said if we bury the hatchet, uh, we building a legacy fast. Thank God I don't run this one on my own, got the bros and the flows of the coldest. Man's kingdom focused, all on the road with the livest shows at the moment. I love my home and it's personal, but to be real, I think I've outgrown this. And we stay playing mode, but I'm 28 days of notice. When I'm gone, I'm gone. So catch me here today, you see me miles from home Might catch a flight to Paris, Paris uh, Spirit is telling me I need to go I just can't stay, cause I'm on this global scene I'ma start this dream in Paris, Paris uh. How good does it look dude? 
one day's work and the paint actually came up well, even the stuff we painted in here yesterday. That's right, with a rattle can in here, um, you can actually, once it cures a bit longer, if you leave it out, you can actually buff it back, sand it back and make it look even more shiny. You probably also noticed that we changed some wheels, put some cool wheels on it. It's kind of common in modified car wheel just to sell that dream a little bit more. Yeah, quite often when you're looking at cars, sometimes you'll see they might have roof pods or they might have certain suspension or wheels and they go, you can have the stock stuff or that for an extra price. Uh, so we did exactly that when we put our ad up. That was yesterday and as you can probably see around us, gone. Gone, there's no Renault here. So it's time to actually see if we made any Mauler. Here's the total on my very professional piece of nice. cardboard. Car was about 800 bucks, Rego around 1,000, paint and sand 200 bucks, the service stuff $300, boot lid was 50 bucks. So our total spend on the car on the road, $2,350. Not bad. We advertised it for seven and a half thousand dollars. Right in the middle of what they usually are advertised for. They're between six and nine. They're literally between six and nine. We advertised it for seven and a half with the wheels or five and a half thousand dollars with no wheels because those end keys are worth around two grand. We sold it without the wheels for $4,600. Not so bad. we made profit of $2,350 in a day. That's pretty good. And someone did get a car that's had some love. It's been fixed up a little bit, but there's definitely more scope to go further with it, depending whether you're gonna make a track hack or a daily or just keep modifying. And I think the important part was, and it's something we spoke about in this video, it's obviously not just about trying to make a dollar. It's about kind of learning, playing with cars and keeping things going because you don't just have to throw things away just because they don't work anymore. And in fact, we've decided to do a couple more of these yeah. because uh, I know a car that I think will be absolutely bellissimo, which is a, a very normal car and something I think we can make good coin from. Mm. So I reckon that's what we do next. I, I've, got a better, I've got a better one for next. Yeah. I reckon because of the season we're coming into, yeah. I reckon... Is nah. absolutely the way to go. Dude, there'll be more money in it as well. Oh, uh, there won't, no, they yeah. definitely, no, dude, there won't be think? more money in that. You, no, might get a, you might get a few weird bids, but I reckon I have the capacity because of the inflated cost of them mm. to make more money. Mm. Mm, maybe. I know, we find out. Well, we'll why don't you do one, I'll do the other. Yeah, cool. And then we'll see what happens or something. Anyway, there it is. That is another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to support the show and we very much appreciate it, you can get a shirt like this one. Well, like it this says one. chop, it's mad Japanese you like that. You can get hats You can like get that hats one. like this one. Hopefully it looks a bit newer than mine. I've been wearing <laughs> mine, I think, for the last 15 or 16 years. You can get all that stuff from MightyCarMods.com. Thank you for watching. Get in your shed. Get a project, get on your driveway. It's really, really fun. It doesn't have to be a big, long, blown out, three year long thing. Mm -hmm. You just grab a car like this, hang out with your mates, do it by yourself, whatever. Use your tools, fix it up, sell it. If you make some money, great. Even if you don't, cool experience, I reckon. And you know what? Cheap cars, I reckon, give you license to do stuff that you wouldn't totally. normally do. If I had some fancy newer car, I don't think I'd be like sticking a basketball down between the, the panels garage. or spraying it. You just wouldn't do it. So in a way, getting something that you care about less gives you more capacity to learn. So really anyway, fun. that's us. There it is. Hello to all the Renault weird beards out there. We can't wait to see you in the comments telling us about all the things we did wrong. Uh, can't wait to see you down there. Uh, thank you very much and see you next time. Bye. Oh, the weird beards are coming for you. I know, they're coming. They're coming. Oh, it's a weird beard. He's here right now. Ah!